In this video, we're going to take a look at caching our simulation so that we can officially scrub our animation with this dynamic animation in place. That's right. So basically what we're going to do is disable the simulation engine. That's no longer going to be responsible for calculating exactly how these particles need to respond on every frame. We're going to more or less record a whole bunch of files that are going to contain the position of all of the particles at every single frame in our animation. Cool. <laughs> this is a great way to put it. As we scrub forward, you'll notice, of course, everything works fine when we're scrubbing forward. As soon as we scrub back, nothing happens. This is because Maya can't simulate backwards. So what we're going to do is essentially tell Maya, just go ahead and record where everybody is, and we won't worry about simulating anymore. That's right. Very, very simple to do. If you look under your solvers menu, you actually have a create particle disk cache option. To use this, you need to go ahead and select some uh, the particle objects in your scene. I'll select them both. So here's one. Yeah, Notice I'm just marquee selecting the particle. Yeah, and you can do both particles at the same time. I'll hold down shift and select another particle. So I have both of the particle objects selected. If you go into a wireframe, you can actually see the particles get highlighted. And then I'll go under solvers, create particle disk cache, and we'll open up the options box. For the most part, the... Uh, options box is just going to give you something to read, <laughs> kind of <laughs> some reading material. But basically it says once created, this cache will be used until you disable it, meaning that this is just going to stay active once you fire it up until you switch it off or delete this cache. Uh, it tells you the directory that the uh, cache files are going to be placed into. It's going to tell you that it'll use the render globals. We'll be talking more about render globals a little bit later. And then it's going to warn you and say Maya will play through the scene, uh, th I'm sorry, through the entire range being cached. Hit escape to interrupt the caching operation. And when it plays through it, you're not going to see anything to actually take place inside your viewport. There's no reason to. We're just going to see the timeline indicators kind of march across the bottom of the That's screen. That's right. Maya's basically running through in memory, running the simulation, finding out where every single particle is and recording that information. So when I hit create. Here we go. Boom. A cra uh, the, okay, cache directory already exists. Yep. That's fine. If you get this message, just click yes. And now look, we're running through as if we had just hit play, but you do not see your curtains opening and swaying. Boom, and boom. We're done. It all goes away. Now, if uh, Zach wants to, yeah, go ahead and rewind and hit play. So if I hit play right now. So that still looks good. Looks exactly like it did before. Now, hit stop right there. Now, scrub backwards. Ah, check that out. You couldn't do that a minute ago. We can officially scrub the animation, meaning at this point, if we wanted to, we go to show... Dynamics, which will hide away all the particles, and we can treat this just like a normal piece of animation. We don't have to worry about the dynamics anymore. Yes, we can. Now, let's go ahead real quick and show them exactly what happened. So we're going to go ahead and open up a folder here. This is inside our projects folder up under the Talented Ball project, and you're going to find a particles folder. Up under particles, there's Talented Ball, which is what we were uh, told inside that dialog a second ago that the uh, particle files, particle cache files, were going to be stored in this location. Mm -hmm. So we'll jump up under that, and what you're going to find down here is 500 different files. Why do we have 500 different files? Well, first, Zach, go ahead and just use the mouse and point to their animation range down back in the oh, area. Well, let me go ahead and move this window out Yeah, away. just point to this guy right here. Right here. So, actually, I'm looking for this guy, the true animation. Image. Okay. I gotcha. right, so, we got 250 frames of animation. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many particle objects do we have? We have two particle have objects. Two of them. So, two times 250 results in 500. So, what does each frame contain? Well, each, or excuse me, each, each file, file. Each file contains the location of every single particle at in that one frame or at that one frame, their location. So, it's like a map for all of the particles in that one particle object at that one particular frame. And don't get confused, because I know we didn't harp on this a lot, because we're trying to keep the uh, discussion over particles very basic. The number of particles in the uh, simulation is not really what's being calculated. We're doing this on a per-particle object basis. That's right. There are two groups of particles in this system. That's right. Now, of course, inside that particle... Right group or that particle object, as I like to refer to it mm -hmm. as, you have a bunch of different particles. That's right. Well, inside each of these different files is a list of every single particle that's inside the particle object and their X, Y, and Z location at the given frame. Yep. That's all there is to it. And yeah, that really is all there is to it. So now we do have the ability to scrub back and forth, and that's pretty much all we wanted to show you guys. So yeah. make sure you go ahead and cache your animation. That's right. So with that done, I'll go ahead and save my scene. And this is a very easy lesson, but that'll wrap everything up.